Hey, it's Ashley from Weska, and today I'm gonna be going over how to balance and control your ambient lighting, both indoors and outdoors using speed lights. So before I get into the shoot, if you're new to the channel, make sure to hit that subscribe button and turn on those bell notifications, that way you can be the first to know when we post new videos. Lighting for both indoor and outdoor doesn't have to be complicated. In fact, they can be very similar. And in this video, I'm going to show you how the process of photographing both can be very alike. And the key to lighting both is finding the right balance of flash and ambient. Let's start with the outdoor look first. For the shoot, I was aiming for a lifestyle type photo, and the shoot was taking place in Hocking Hills, Ohio. This is such a great location in the fall. Since all the leaves are turning, we were surrounded by this bright fall colors and also had the endless hillside of Hocking Hills. Inspired by that, I was looking for a very warm fall tones for my photos. We had access to a log cabin for the shoot, so I decided to use the outside walls for the first location. When shooting outdoors, I like to assess the ambient lighting before setting up any gear. Since it was still fairly early in the morning with the sun closer to the horizon, the surrounding woods were casting shadows onto the cabin wall and creating some really interesting texture. So I decided to play into this and light from the same direction the sun was coming from. This allowed me to get lighting that looked more natural in the environment. I wanted to complement the ambient lighting instead of competing with it, so I was able to use a less powerful off-camera flash. For this, I chose an FG80 speed light, which allows me to quickly and easily set up my lights in each location due to the compact and lightweight nature of speed lights. To soften the light and get a more natural look out of a speed light, I modified the FG80 with a rapid box switch 2x3 softbox. I placed the light off to the side of my model in the same direction that the sun was coming from. This allowed me to create a light that complemented the natural ambient light while still being able to control the brightness of the light and how the light fell on my subject's face. When shooting outdoors, it's important to balance the output of your flash with the available ambient light. The easiest way to do this is to first get your ambient exposure without any flash. Once you get your background looking how you want it, then you bring in your flash and get your exposure on your subject. For this photo, I shot at a slightly lower angle. That way I can get the pampas grass in front of my model and add some foreground interest. My settings for this shot ended up at ISO 100, F4 at 1 200th of a second. After I got the shot outside of the cabin, I moved it inside to get a lifestyle portrait of my model in front of the fireplace. I wanted it to look like it was late evening or night, so that the fire in the background would be the main detail of the background. Just like when shooting outside, my first step was to analyze the existing ambient light. One major difference when working indoors is that you typically have more control of the existing ambient light. So the first thing I did was to turn off any of the room lights that I could. This way I could add in the controlled light instead of relying on the available light. Next, I looked at what kind of light was coming in through the windows. With the window light, you have two options. You can either block out the light coming through with something like a scrim, or you can incorporate it into your photo. In the room that I was shooting in, there was a ton of window light coming in from multiple doors and windows. So instead of blocking out all the light, which would have taken a very long time, I decided to work with it. The overall ambient light served as a slight fill to the room, helped brightening up and lifting the shadows of my model's face. I noticed that the strongest ambient light was coming in through the big two sliding glass doors. I decided to place my model with her back to those, using the ambient light as a slight rim light. To keep the shoot quick and easy, I used the exact same gear that I used outside, an FG80 speed light modified by 2x3 rapid box switch. I decided to add in a second FG80 as a hair light. This combined with the ambient rim really helped separate my model from the background. I added a CTO gel, or color temperature orange, to highlight and complement the warm tones of the room and to match the light coming from the fireplace. The settings for the shot ended up being ISO 100, F4 at 1 40th of a second. I actually chose to shoot the slower shutter speed on purpose to help complement the look. Since I knew the flash would freeze my subject, I decided to lower my shutter speed to add in some more ambient light. This means not only the rim light from the window would be brighter, but more importantly, the flames from the fireplace would be brighter and more significant in the photo. When it comes to lighting both indoors and outdoors, the process can be pretty similar. The trick to both is to analyze and control the balance of ambient and flash, and to find the right mix of the two to give you the look that you want for the scene. In this instance, I wanted more ambient light in the outdoor scene, so I exposed the scene from the more ambient light, 
whereas in the indoor scene I wanted it darker. So I let my speed light overpower that ambient light and lit it mostly with flash. This is why it's so important to take the time and assess the ambient light before you set up any of your gear. So which of these two setups did you guys like better? The indoors or the outdoors? Let me know in the comments below and as always, thank you for watching.